Well, I mean, it's common, right? I mean, this is, uh, this is the strike that's referred to as the caveman strike. It's, you know, like intimating that this is the, the, the first go-to strike of most people. Um, so, so, I mean, that's, that's one reason. Um, the forehand strike, it's, it's like at least half of the game uh, un until you start, you know, doing the upper cuts and the, the horizontal cuts. So, so it's, it's very common. Um, also, if you're reductive, like I often am, um, pretty much everything from the forehand side can be treated like angle one. So, um, you know, and, th and that leaves only one other side to work with. Um, the, the other reason it's really valuable, especially from the JKD perspective, is that you get to start looking at how do different arts deal with angle one. And, um, you know, in some arts, it's like what kind of an, what quality of an angle one are we dealing with uh, will will change how you approach it. So, um, but but again, getting back to that JKD perspective, if you're looking at multiple martial arts and you want to really see how looking at a blend of different sources is going to affect you, then picking one stimulus and putting that same stimulus into a bunch of different systems and seeing how those systems uh, churn out the, the responses, um, that's going to be very revealing um, from the perspective of analyzing the arts, but also from the perspective of analyzing what works for you personally. Because uh, you're going to have a lot of different things that influence the way that you end up moving um, and the, the kinds of tactics you end up employing. Um, you may be fast, and uh, you may be extremely brave, and then you would you would be like, oh, okay, so I just want to crash all the time, right? Um, or you you may not be so brave, um, but you may be really flexible, and so uh, maybe using measure, uh, and maybe like just re you know slipping out of distance, but reaching in is going to be your mainstay. Or maybe you have a really high sensitivity, and so. Um, you know, making contact as soon as possible is going to be the thing that you want more. And you may or may not find the contacts that you want in the art that you're studying. You might find it in another art. And you might find that in another art that doesn't use sensitivity the same way. So it's, it's really nice in terms of, of being able to analyze, to have one stimulus, and look at the way that a bunch of different arts will address that. Yeah, it's going to yield a lot of information. It's kind so of like having a control group. Which of your influences uh, came out today? If you can, if you can remember, track back all oh, the names and, oh. and all the systems that came out in this exploration of uh, angle one, from provocation to you know knife to karambit to stick to machete. <laughs> Let's name them all. Okay, who who really? came out today? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, the root stuff, obviously the the Kabayama, um, JKD. It's my foundation. I'm seeing a heavy impact from KI. I'm seeing a very heavy presence uh, of the SSBD. Once we're in close, uh, I'm seeing my Muay Thai, uh, and my clinch game from Larry Hartzell, from Greg Nelson, and all of that stuff came from Guru Dan. Um, as far as I'm concerned, most all of the martial arts movements in North America circled around Guru Dan in one way or another. When I get in uh, sort of trapping range, um, very heavily influenced by Pikiti uh, and Philip Jelena. Vunak's in there all the time, especially like where I'm getting creative and I just start hitting a lot. Um, Mal Morney is, like I said, the SSPD is showing up very heavily these days uh, in everything I do. It's, it's kind of hard to take it away. Um, my body is, my, my back is rebuilding because of my work with Alvin Ganano and, and SBL. Yeah, there are uh, a lot of teachers that, I, that, um, that come out in, in the details. I have to say something about uh, Aldo Valente, who's my Bolognese sword teacher, um, because uh, the whole concept of provocation, um, didn't, I didn't learn it from him, but it was solidified through his work. Uh, Romeo Macabagal and uh, um, Fabrizio Filigrano uh, have definitely um, given me my measure and and like again it, that those systems load in front of everything else I've learned now because um, my management of measure is just so vastly improved 
Uh, so, yeah, they're always they're always talking in my head while I'm while I'm moving. You know, the the stuff that I got from Russia House, whether it's uh, Riddell or um, or Celestino, Nor Norman Elisar, uh, uh I'm planning on spending a whole much a whole bunch more time with uh, Celestino Makachor uh, because he uses measure, uh, but for percussion and um, as opposed to cutting. So, uh, final question. Um, what do you hope that the people who, you know, purchase this video, watch this video, and think it's amazing, uh, what do you hope they gain out of this? Um, and what do you hope they do afterwards? Well, I hope they learn it well enough to, um, to see through the, how amazing it is, you know, and, and see, like, start seeing where it's flawed and, and where, like, they need more work um, and, and feel inspired to look at more than one thing. Uh, you know, anybody that that, um, that ends up putting a teacher up on a pedestal, and certainly any of my students are discouraged from doing so, um, you know, I, I want them to be inspired by the journey, um, but but also be fortified in the, in the idea of the journey's not over, and, and no teacher has got the, the end-all information, um, you know. The, the, the more you, the more sources you draw from, the more of a personal expression you're going to have. You know, the, the, the fewer number of sources, the more likely you're going to mimic. Um, and we don't want to mimic, we want to express. Wouldn't it be an amazing byproduct as well for something you've said to have inspired somebody enough to go seek out Maul and, and Romeo? And, Absolutely, we right? have. We have so many amazing instructors. Um, I don't get to see nearly as many people per year as I want to <laughs> because um, I've, I've slowly come to the realization that, that um, you can love everyone, but, but you're not going to be able to draw uh, a complete experience from everyone at the same time. So you're gonna have to make choices. But uh, there are so many great instructors and uh, the ones that I'm choosing right now are certainly the, the top of my list uh, but there yeah there's many many great instructors if you if you want your CLAT if you want that sweeping stuff I definitely suggest that you go to mall and that's not to say don't go to the Innocento Academy and learn Majapayat because he has an excellent way of organizing the system so you can see the whole thing but then go to mall to work out the details and 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 see like an alternative application um, because the angles are different. The moves are the same, but the angles are different. The the mode of application is different, and so that that'll give you double the perspective. Um, and, and then you know if if you want to get dynamic on the ground, like work with Alvin be, because his focus on conditioning Westerners to be capable of moving like Indone rural Indonesians who live on the ground, um, it's, it's priceless. Like you really can't go there uh, from here with, without someone giving you that, uh, that education, you know. Uh, and you see the movement already happening in North America. It's like, oh, we're doing animal movement. And it's like, well, yeah, see, that's been doing animal movement for a long time. <laughs> so, so maybe you know, go to go see people like that and, and get the functional side. Um, you know, if it was possible to for everybody to go train with Romeo Macabagal, I would say do it. Um, but it is possible to to get in time with uh, um, Fabrizio Monsieur Filigrana, uh, and um, you know. He is focused on teaching it exactly the way that Maka Pagal has been teaching us. Um, so get time in with him if you get the chance. Um, there, there are so many people. And, and the truth is a lot of the grandmasters, like they're, they're joking now about not, not necessarily being around next year. So um, I, I don't think those jokes are very funny. <laughs> but but I think that there's a really good point there. It's like you, you want to see the grandmasters at some point. There's there's all these young bucks, you know, uh, at 50. I'm calling myself that. But there's all these younger folk that that are, are burgeoning right now. But uh, definitely get out to see the grandmasters uh, before you the chance has passed.
why are, why are you doing all this? Why are you so meticulous and careful with not only how you digest information, but how you disseminate that information? Why are you doing this? Um, I, I do it because I love it. Uh, I do it because uh, it keeps me sane. Um, if, if I couldn't do something that uh, made me feel like I was developing, that, that uh, gave me opportunities to feel joy, um, that, that gave me the opportunity to share something of value. Um, and when I say something of value, I'm usually talking about empowering people. Um, I want to give people themselves. And, uh, you know, because it makes me feel good. So, so really, when it all comes down to it, I'm super, super selfish, and I just want to feel good. <laughs> so um, that's why I'm doing it. Um, I'm, in, I'm in love with movement, uh, whether it's martial arts or dance or circus. I'm, uh, it doesn't really matter what it is. I'm in love with mastery. Um, I, could, I could stand and watch a master bricklayer build a wall for the entire day and, and just enjoy watching the mastery. Uh, of that, so um, I get the opportunity to meet people who have committed their uh, a significant portion of their lives to developing themselves and, and sharing with them. It's just extraordinary. So. Sean, thanks very much for spending this time with us. Thank you. Thank you.